This is part 90 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to display error-specific custom error page in ASP.NET Core MVC. This is continuation to our previous video part 89. So please watch part 89 before proceeding. At the moment, in the admin role, we've got two users. Now, if we try to delete this role, we get an exception because of the way we have set up foreign key referential integrity constraint in our previous video. Displaying this exception page is fine in the development environment, but displaying it in the production environment is bad for two reasons. First of all, it doesn't make much sense to the end user and it is also a security risk. In a production environment, we want to display a custom error page. So if we take a look at the configure method in the startup class, which is present in the startup.cs file, notice if the environment is development, we are using the developer exception page middleware to display this developer exception page. If the environment is a non-development environment, then the control comes into the else block and here we are using exception handler middleware. We discussed this middleware in part 60 of this video series. This middleware component redirects the user to our custom error view error.cshtml and this view is present in the shared folder. If you're wondering why are we seeing this developer exception page and not this custom error view, well, that's because at the moment we are still running our project using the development environment settings. Let's change this to production and then rerun our project. At the moment, we are on the home page. When I click on this manage drop down menu, notice it doesn't work. That's because for a non-development environment, we are not loading the required script files. So if we take a look at our layout view, notice if the environment is development, in addition to the bootstrap CSS file, we are loading all these JavaScript files. For a non-development environment, we are only loading the bootstrap CSS file from the CDN. We have to load these other files also from a CDN. I am going to leave that as an exercise for you to do. In the interest of time, I am simply going to copy these script tags and paste them in this non-development environment section as well. Save the changes and reload the web page. Notice now when we click on the manage drop down, it works. Let's go to the roles page and then try to delete this admin role. There we go. We see our custom error page and not the developer exception page. By the way, we have a typo here. The message should say an error occurred. We are missing the word error. Before we forget it, let's include it within our error view and save our changes. As you can see, this is a very general error view. When we try to delete a role and we are not able to do it because there are users in this role, we want to pass a bit more information to this error view so the end user knows what exactly went wrong. Maybe in this case, we want our error view to look like this. Notice the message clearly tells the end user what went wrong. The admin role that he is trying to delete is in use admin role cannot be deleted as there are users in this role. If you want to delete this role, please remove the users from the role and then try to delete. To make this happen, we are going to customize our custom error view. I'm going to include an if block here and check error title property on view bag. So if this error title property on the view bag object is null, this means there is no error specific information passed to this view. So in this case, we want to display this generic error message. Else, display error specific data that is present in error title and error message properties of the view bag object. Our next step is to populate these dynamic properties when we try to delete the role. The code to delete the role is present within our administration controller. So if we scroll down, here is the delete role method. Notice on the role manager service, we are calling the delete async method, which actually deletes the role from the underlying database. If there are users in the role, this is the line that causes the exception. So let's wrap all these lines of code using a try catch block. So I'm going to cut all these lines, include a try block, paste the lines which we have cut and let's also include the catch block. 
catch the exception. Now let's place a breakpoint on this line and then run our project in debug mode. Our build failed. Let's take a look what the errors are. Not all code paths return a value. We have this error because from the catch block we are not returning anything. Let's actually return our error view. Before we send the user to our custom error view, let's also set these two properties, error title and error message on the view bag object. The error message is pretty long. Let's break it into two lines actually three lines. If you're wondering where is this role variable coming from? Well, if you look at our delete role method, it receives the role ID that we want to delete as a parameter. We are retrieving that respective role from the database using the ID. So in this variable, we have the role object and we are using the name property to retrieve the name of the role. So for example, if the role name is admin, the error title will be admin role is in use. Similarly, in the error message also, we are including the role name. So with this change in place, let's run our project in debug mode. Navigate to the rules page and let's try to delete the admin role. Our breakpoint is hit. Now we know this line is going to throw an exception if we continue the execution. So let's place another breakpoint here within the catch block and then continue the execution. If we hover the mouse over this exception object, notice the exception type is DB update exception. So the role manager tried to delete the role, but there are users in this role. So the delete failed and we have this DB update exception, which is caught by our catch block. And within the catch block, we are setting error title and error message properties on the view bag and then sending the user to the error view. So if we continue the execution, we see our custom error view as expected. Now catching this general exception here instead of the DB update exception is not a very good idea. To understand why, let's stop debugging and throw a deliberate exception. Let's do that right here just before the call to delete async method. We want to throw a new exception and the exception message is test exception and then run our project again in debug mode. Before we try to delete the admin role, let's remove this breakpoint and set a breakpoint on this line and then navigate to the roles page and let's delete this admin role. Our breakpoint is hit. Now if we continue the execution, we know this line is going to throw an exception and this catch block will be able to catch that exception because the exception type that we have specified here is the general exception type. Notice when we click continue, the control comes into the catch block, we catch the exception and if we again continue the execution, we see the same error message, admin role is in use. We only want to display this message if we are unable to delete a role because there are still users in that role. If it is any other exception, then we want to display this general message to the user. So for that, instead of catching the base general exception, we want to catch the specific DB update exception. So let's stop debugging and then change the exception type here from the general base exception to DB update exception. Let's bring in the required namespace by pressing control period and then run the project again in debug mode. Navigate to the list roles page and let's try to delete the admin role. Before we click the S button and post back, let's open error controller because if there is an unhandled exception within the error controller, this error method is called. So let's place a breakpoint here and then hit the S yes button. Our breakpoint is hit. If we now continue the execution, an exception of type exception will be thrown. This catch block will not be able to catch this exception because it's only handling this specific DB update exception. So this exception gets bubbled up and handled centrally by our error controller. So the control gets inside this error action method. We are logging the exception here and then sending the user 
to the error view and before sending the user to the error view we are not setting the error title property on the view bag object so this if expression will be true and this general error message will be displayed to the user let's look at this in action so let's go to the administration controller and continue the execution notice the control now is in the error action method before we continue the execution within our error view let's place a breakpoint right here and then continue the execution notice the execution is now in the error view and when i hover the mouse over the error title property you can see it is now and if we now continue the execution we see this general message there we go so the point that I'm trying to make is if we try to delete a role and we are not able to do it because there are still users in the role, then we want to display this custom message. The role cannot be deleted because there are users. Otherwise, we want to display this general error message. We only included this throw statement right here for demonstration. We don't need it anymore. So let's stop debugging and then comment this line. Now, Notice we have a green squiggly under this variable ex and when I hover the mouse over we have a warning the variable ex is declared but never used. So basically we are catching the exception but not really doing anything with it. In most real world applications we log the exceptions either to a file or a database table so a developer can review them later and provide a fix if required. We discussed logging in detail in parts 61 to 64 in this video series. To log the exception, we need to inject the iLogger interface provided by ASP.NET Core. Let's do that using the constructor. iLogger is in Microsoft.Extensions.Logging namespace. Let's bring that in. And as a generic argument, we specify the name of our controller, administration controller. And let's call the parameter logger. Generate the required private field by pressing control period and then select this second option. All that is left to do is within our catch block, let's use this private field logger and log the exception. Before we send the user to error view, let's log the exception using log error method. Along with the exception, let's also log the message error deleting role. If we now try to delete the role, we see our custom error message and the exception should also be logged. In our case, we are logging the exception to a file. To know the location of the log file, look for nlog.config file within your root project folder. On my machine, the log file is saved to C demo logs folder. In the log file, search for this string. Notice along with the string error deleting role, we also have db update exception logged as expected. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.